What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Again, I'm still answering emails from like around Christmas time, and this one is another um, email that I got about addiction. I feel it's super important to answer these things because there's a lot of people I come in contact with these D-Expos and stuff that didn't have anywhere to turn. They didn't have anyone to turn to. They didn't understand what the fuck was going on with them, even though the doctors tell them one thing. to pay. Like, They needed someone from outside of that emotional team that they have, their support system, to really give it to them fucking straight and explain to them what's going on. So I got this email from this guy, and this was around Christmas time. And he asked me about, um, well, he flat out said that, you know, he's had a problem with the opiates and he knows I've had the problem. And, you know, he was on a methadone maintenance program, which I myself was on methadone. That was the first step towards getting clean was to get on methadone and get off the heroin, to be honest with you, before you can actually start thinking clearly. Now, when you're on the methadone, you don't get high on the methadone, I guess, unless you have a high enough dose. And mine really wasn't that high. But you're still not really thinking super clearly. And I didn't know that. Most people don't know that. When you're on the methadone, you're kind of numb. And when I got off the methadone, I got on the Suboxone, which, again, keeps you a little numb. You don't have highs and lows. You're just kind of normal. And this guy said he went to the doctor, and the doctor had messed with his methadone dose and said, you know, are you having any cravings? Are you thinking about using again? And he said shortly right after the doctor visit, that's when he started having cravings and thinking about it. Now, one of two things could happen. They adjust the dose once you drop the dose of methadone because you're not having cravings, and you start to get them. Another thing is just by talking about it sometimes, not with a therapist, but with someone like a doctor, they're very medical. They say things that sometimes can kind of trigger things in your brain that you don't even really know. They say, well, you're having this feeling, you're having that feeling, you think like this, you think like that, and you're like, I don't know, I don't know, maybe I am. No, I don't know. And next thing you know, you're at home, racking your brain to be like, do I feel this? Do I feel that? I don't know. Oh my God, do I? And you start to stress out. And when you start to stress out, that's when you want to use drugs. So it can actually kind of trigger that to happen. And... This guy in this email asked me, you know, I don't know if he relapsed or not. I don't remember reading the email if he did or not. But he asked me if I have ever slipped up and relapsed. No. Once I went on the methadone program, I never touched anything again. No more heroin. It was done. I knew that being sick from being dope sick was what was keeping me on the drugs. If I could get to a point where I wasn't sick, I, wouldn't, I didn't want to stick a needle in my arm anymore. I didn't want to do it. I had enough of the lifestyle. My fucking life was in shambles. I need to figure out how to fix myself. And I couldn't fix myself until I stopped being sick. So that was the whole key was to not be sick. Now, some therapists and doctors say relapse is part of the process. Bullshit. I don't believe that whatsoever. I do believe that relapse is a moment of weakness. And it's like anything else. If you have a fucking scratch and you don't, an itch and you don't scratch it, it will go away. I do remember back in the day, Bill Phillips had a, um, for Body for Life, he had myoplex and eas and all this stuff and he had a guy that was in his transformation thing and these guys would actually write like articles or columns about their transformations and the guy said that he was at like a party or something like it was a super bowl thing and everybody was eating fucking nachos and fucking all kinds of crap and he was on his program he wanted to get leaner and he said i started to fucking wig out he goes i got up i walked in the kitchen he goes i mixed up a myoplex i drank it sipped it slowly and as soon as i was done drinking the myoplex the craving went away everything was cool and i was fine he took the, the time to really focus on calming himself the fuck down rather than giving in to the impulse. And that is a lot like what goes on with drugs. If you calm yourself down when you have a craving, you can ride out that impulse as long as you don't give into it. You won't have the fucking slip up. You won't have the relapse. The problem is there's a moment of weakness where you give in and that's when you relapse. And once you relapse, that can be just a one-time thing, like you do one shot, or that could be a fucking bender the last two weeks, or it could be one shot and it fucking kills you. I see that time and time again too. They go back to doing, you know, I just do one shot and they fucking kill themselves because they don't realize how little they actually need compared to what they were taking before and they overdose. So no, relapse was not in my program. I've never fucking had it happen. Have I thought about it? Here's the fucked up part. Logically, consciously, no. It never crosses my mind, even though I'm aware that at any fucking time, like right now, me and Aaron have a knockdown, drag out fight. At any time, my brain could go, the only thing you can do right now is get fucking high. It's time. Let's go. It's time. You've been good enough, long enough. Your brain can fucking actually function like that and talk you into doing it. And I'm aware of that. And if something like that happens, I'll fight it off and I'll, I'll do that whole fucking thing where you just kind of push the impulse away. But I was talking to um, Greg Valentino the other night. We were on the phone for a couple hours, actually, just shooting shit about random stuff. We get to talking about drug addiction. And he asked me, do you ever have any cravings anymore? Do you ever want it anymore? And here's the fucked up part. It's 15 years since I've taken fucking something. New Bane. I have dreams 
about Nube. And most of the dreams, not a recurring dream because they're different each time, but it'll be like in my closet. I used to take my fucking jackets and stuff and I used to hide Oxycontins, heroin, Nube. And I used to put the bottles of Nube in my fucking jacket pocket and I had a whole bunch of jackets in the closet. So therefore nobody would fucking go through all the jackets, right? Or I'd stick it in a fucking shoe in the closet or whatever. It was like a spare one in case I got fucking caught or I ran out. I always had a spare one. And in my dream that I have, a reoccurring dream, not reoccurring, but similar dreams, I go to get a jacket out of the closet now, and I find a bottle of Nube. And it's open, and it's like half used. And the first thing I do, instead of being like, holy fuck, and getting rid of it, is I hide it. I hide it, like in the bathroom, in the bedroom. I hide it from the people around me, which in the dreams, it's usually my parents or my girlfriend or, you know, different people that have been in my life throughout the years. I hide it from them. And I wait. I wait for them to leave. I wait for them to go to school. I wait for them to go to fucking church. I wait for them to do whatever. And then I think about it. And I say, man, I could just do a couple shots. They don't even fucking know. I can't wait for them to leave. They leave and I go look for the new vein bottle where I hid it. Which is sometimes under the sink in the bathroom, whatever. And the bottle's gone. And I start to freak out because I can't find it now. I'm going through the drawers in the bathroom. I look in the shower. I look in the closets. I look all over the place and that bottle of the new vein is gone. And at that point, I usually wake up, and I'm not having a craving for opiates, I'm not having a craving for Nubane. I wake up and realize, fuck, that's like a, like an instant fucking replay, like a flashback of my life back in the day. And I realize, my brain still wants it. My brain still wants a shot of Nubane. It wants that little fucking bottle, it wants to be able to fucking draw it out, get the air bubbles out, it wants the whole fucking ritual of it. It wants the Nubane still, years later. And even though I don't have physical cravings and withdrawal, my brain, when it's at rest, lets me know that, hey, I still want this shit. If you can fucking get it, go for it. And I sit back and I'm like, that's some powerful fucking shit right there. I mean, it's harder to, to sit back and say, this is going to happen for the rest of my life. And I don't know if that's fact. I don't know if for the rest of my life I'm going to have these dreams. And I usually tell, like, you know, when I was with Carrie, I told her about it. I tell Aaron about them. I told Greg about it the other night that I have these dreams. It's not often. It's every once in a while. And I don't even know. I can't even pinpoint a pattern to where... It could be like I have something traumatic in my life happen and my brain is looking for it. I don't even know what triggers it, but I've been in Mexico five, six, seven times where you can buy new Bane legally, you know, and it never dawned on me to, to buy a bottle and try it. I mean, I've been in pharmacies by myself on the trip where I could just buy a bottle, take a shot, fucking go about my day. And I bet you everybody would just think like, Jerry's so happy he just had a fucking Red Bull. Like, that's how I would act on it. Never, never occurred to me to do it. So you see, like, you know, there's really not much... I can tell you about relapsing because I haven't done it myself. I've seen other people do it. They've died. You know, do I think it's part of a uh, recovery? That's what I hear, but I don't think it has to be. Your destiny is yours. Your recovery is yours. And whatever you choose to do is what you're going to do. But I do believe that after a certain point, drug addiction is a choice. You're no longer strapped to that drug. Once the physical withdrawals are gone, it is now a choice. It's a mental battle and you need to make the choice every day to not do it. Best of luck. Biosatraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosatraining.com is a vlog. It's the choice bicep and we're out.